Hi, my name is Ram D. Sriram and I am the Chief of the Software and Systems Division in the Information Technology Lab at the National Institute of Standards and Technology. I would like to start my presentation with the following scenario. Assume that you are visiting Washington DC and you are near the White House around 10 a.m. You seem to have some flu-like symptoms. At 10.30 a.m. you get a message on your smartphone just like the one that I am showing you right now. You get a message saying that you have to go to the nearest medical facility located at 2301 M Street Northwest which is a Kaiser Permanente facility and you also happen to be a member of Kaiser Permanente. This is possible because in a smart net centric society sensors on your body will send vital signals and as other associated information to appropriate laboratories and medical centers. These centers will analyze the information including searching the internet for potential solutions, searching the social networks to find out if other people have similar symptoms around the area. So taking all this into consideration, the system will determine possible causes for this phenomena. Based on the situational analysis, it was decided that you will be suffering or you may be suffering from swine flu and directed to the nearest clinic. My colleague Ramesh Jain at the University of California Irvine has demonstrated such a system for asthma sufferers. The above scenario exemplifies the emergence of the internet. The internet which has spanned several networks in a wide variety of domains is having a significant impact on every aspect of our lives. The next generation of networks will utilize a wide variety of resources with significant sensing capabilities. Such networks will extend beyond physically linked computers to include multimodal information from biological, cognitive, semantic and social networks of people, intelligent devices and mobile personal computing and communication devices or MPCDs. And this will all form smart network systems and societies. Your iPhone just like the one that I showed before or the Android phone is an excellent example of an MPCD. According to a recent report by McKinsey and company, the worldwide internet use population was about 2.7 billion in 2013 with many of them accessing through MPCDs. This number is likely to grow to around 4.5 billion in the coming decade. The MPCDs are already equipped with a myriad of sensors with regular, update, with regular updates of additional sensing capabilities. The healthcare field is an excellent example where we see applications that monitor your heart, detect malaria, HIV and cervical cancer, control glucose levels among other things. Additionally, we are witnessing the emergence of intelligent devices such as smart sensors, smart refrigerators with considerable sensing and networking capabilities as these devices and the network will be constantly sensing, monitoring and interpreting the environment. This is sometimes referred to as the internet of things or IOT for short. Cyber physical systems, short CPSS, extend IOT and will play an increasingly important role in the next generation industrial systems. These systems extend IOT by adding a control and decision making layer and place emphasis on embedded systems and the tight coupling between hardware and software. Examples of CPSS include the following, smart cars which drive on their own just like the Google car, networked medical devices which coordinate and communicate with each other, smart infrastructure where smart sensors will be embedded in various infrastructure elements such as bridges, aircraft, building, parking lot and will facilitate automated decision making. And number four, robot swarms which will aid in defense, homeland security and rescue missions. When humans take an active role in CPSS, we have cyber physical human systems 
that is CPHS. These systems can be viewed as socio-technical systems with a symbiotic relationship between human and the physical device. One example is a network of doctors, nurses, hospitals, medical devices, patients and transportation systems. Finally, we have the emergence of social networks such as Facebook and Twitter, which primarily connect people with one another. These networks have played a very important role in various democratic uprisings in the recent past. Social networks have been used both to curtail and to propagate freedom of speech. When these networks are combined with CPSS and CPHSS, we have smart network systems and societies, also known as cyber physical social systems. This will have a significant impact and significant implications for both the market for advanced computing and communication infrastructure and the future markets for nearly 4.5 billion people that these net centric societies will create. Yeah, the development of a trusted, secure, reliable and interoperable net centric computing environment will need technologies that can assure a flexible and scalable system allowing the application of diverse and robust privacy requirements, thus enabling the trusted and meaningful growth of net centric infrastructures for the benefit of all societies. This would involve pursuing several goals. One, identifying architectures and control strategies. Two, developing protocols for information security of MPCDs and other devices on the network. Three, implementing robust software assurance techniques for MPCDs and other devices. Four, analyzing and predicting the behavior of large net centric societies. Five, facilitating seamless interoperability between and among all these devices. Six, analyzing data and identifying patterns. Seven, developing strategies for dealing with both physical and social sensors and actuators and a combination of these things. Eight, placing emphasis on appropriate human computer interactions. Nine, developing strategies for long term storage. And finally, number 10, establishing a testing facility. I would like to end my talk today with the following. It took 30,000 people to build the Taj Mahal. It took 100,000 people to build the Great Pyramid. About 300 to 400,000 people were involved in putting a man on the moon. Now imagine, imagine what can the combined intelligence of millions and millions of people on the internet can achieve. The ideas presented in this brief talk have emerged during discussions with a number of my colleagues, both at NIST and elsewhere. My sincere thanks to all of them and thank you for listening.